If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented, of course, by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, bunch of media gigs, bunch of podcasts, loving life, loving the Even Money Podcast. Please give us five-star rating and review. However you listen to the show, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, or if you watch on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. That is awesome as well. As a reminder, if you give us a five-star review and send it to me, Ross at Ross Tucker.com, your email question goes to the top of the queue, as they say, because a lot of you, and I mean a lot, have questions for our guy, Steve Fezzik, the only two-time winner of the Super Bowl of professional football gambling. It's the Super Contest at the Westgate. Here we are, by the way, Steve. Uh, before you know it, preseason games will be here. It's getting wild. Uh, but before we get to that, we thought we'd do something a little fun this week, which is your tips on winning sports betting preparation, which I look, I take notes every week because we post social media clips to youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL or at Ross Tucker pod on social media. But I'm especially taking some notes this week, Steve. So maybe we might even get to some poker tips later. Definitely going to get to an email question or two, but I want to start with some of your tips on winning sport. You're calling it winning sports preparation. Explain that. So it's the summertime. Yes, you can bet on the CFL and golf and both leagues. But the bottom line is you get some extra time. Football's not going on. And because of that, it's time to get your ducks in a row to prepare for upcoming NFL and college football. And, you know, the number one thing that people should be doing is getting their accounts funded. Get a lot of outs. Get a lot of different places to play. We love DraftKings, but the bottom line is, Ross, we're here to make money. We're mercenaries. We're going to bet wherever we have the very best number. And the only way we can do that is to have our funds ready at multiple books. So it's interesting that you say that. Because I think some people sort of understand that, Steve. And they'll have multiple apps on their phone. But they still probably are only having two, three, something like that. And then there are other people. Even though they know about getting the better of the number. Even though they know all that stuff, Steve. They have an app they like. Hopefully it's DraftKings Sportsbook. Maybe it's not. And they have all their money there. They track all their money there. That's how they're going to do it. And that's not how you do it if you want to win. It's almost like imagine you've got five gas stations all within a mile of your house. And for whatever reason, they have violent and wild price fluctuations in the gas. Would you just blindly just drive to one of them because you're comfortable with it? Some of you do. Some of you don't pay attention. Other use of you maniacally track what those prices are. You know, there's probably a happy medium where you don't drive across town to save 29 cents in gas. But um, all things being equal, if the two stations are right next to each other, why not go to the place with the cheaper gas? So what do you think is a reasonable number of places it all depends how much betting you do if you're a 500 dollars game big better i think you probably need eight uh if you bet like 50 dollars a game one is never the right answer three is fine if you're a small better recreational better i'm not going to ask you to go and line up uh, a dozen books but the difference between one and three is enormous because that's enough such that you're 
almost always going to be able to get a line that's at least as good, if not better, than the overall market average. Interesting. Um, what are other reasons why you would want to have that many books? Because different books like to put up original numbers on props and the like. And prop betting, we talk about one of the most profitable things that we do. And if you're betting player props, you may well get shut out. If you just have one book, that book may choose not to put up uh, props on something you want to wager on. If you've got three to five books, you're probably going to have that prop available to you to be able to bet. Well, and I would say, especially with new states legalizing, Steve, but even some of the ones that have been legal for a while, you've talked about this before, but they all have different promos to try to get new customers. They, they all have different promotions, and why not take advantage of that essentially free money? And it really is free money. So if you're in a state that just legalized and – you want a free $5,000. I don't know about you, Ross, but $5,000 is enough to excite me. I could literally say to somebody, if you're in Illinois or Ohio and you don't have any sports books and you could use an extra five grand, simply like going in and taking advantage of their first time deposits, it's not unusual. You put $1,000 in and they give you $1,000 in free bets, which if you've listened to the Ross Tucker podcast, Even Money, We've explained that by playing things like three-team parlays with that free play, it's worth 75 cents on the dollar. So a $1,000 bonus is literally handing you $750 in cash. How is it that these companies are able to just give away such massive amounts of bonuses? Well, the truth is, is that player acquisition is so important that they feel if they can just get that customer before anyone else He'll be a customer for life and they'll make so much money off of him. And they don't realize that if you're a sharp and an advantage player, no, you're going to win in your sports betting. And they're just handing you, like I said, $750 for 45 minutes of work. You have to do it. 45 minutes. Why is it 45 minutes? Well, I'm saying, you know, going to the website, transferring the money over, figuring out what the optimal bonus is. I just threw that out. You, you probably could do it a lot faster, right, Ross? Well, no, I was just curious. Um, I do know somebody was telling me recently, oh, I was, I was hearing a guy that just had issues because sometimes, you know, your bank initially is like, no, and then they, they won't fund it. So then you got to do like PayPal or something, which I think is really weird that banks can decide not to fund something that's legal. Like, how is that How is that even a thing? It can be a serious pain in the butt. That's why I said 45 minutes. But as you get more adept at doing it, you're certainly going to be successful. And that's why I always prefer a brick and mortar place. If, if a place physically has a property that you can walk in and just deposit the money and get the bonus, that's so much easier, you know, I, I'm a poker player. I go to um, any Harris property from a World Series of Poker account. They give me, a, you know, every now and then they have a promo with the thousand dollars, you know, match where you have a, a, a large playthrough requirement. But I'll just physically deposit the cash. It's easy enough whenever I'm in a, a property there. So um, speaking of it being a pain in the butt, I think for a lot of us, it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to go ahead and eat our vegetables every day, which is one of the reasons why I take Athletic Greens. One of many. Better gut health, thank you. More energy, love it. Optimized immune system, that's critical, especially now. Plus, I just don't like popping that many pills, vitamins, and I don't love eating vegetables. This way with Athletic Greens, one delicious scoop, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. Here's all you need to know about it. Costs less than $3 a day, and it's better than a multivitamin. To make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash money. 
Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash money to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, let's get to some more of your tips here, Steve, including figure out a free line service to use. What does that mean? Well, how do you know if you've got a good line on a game? You Now's the time to go ahead and surf around. Uh, pregame.com has, has an excellent one that you just click and you can see what the odds are at all the different books. So that if you're going to make a bet on the Dallas Cowboys in your book, let's say you only have one book and you haven't gotten around and you're not following my advice. Well, at least if you're about to bet the Cowboys, don't lay three and a half until you can look and see what other books have. There may be threes out there. Obviously, there's threes out there. You don't want to lay three and a half. Um, there's different sites have different free odds that are available. And as you get used to going ahead and navigating all of these, you can, you can go ahead and find one you're the most comfortable with. You really don't have to pay for a line service. Now, I pay for the Don Best premium line service. It costs me $500 a month. That gives me instantaneous line changes because I need it as a pro. You don't need it as a recreation player, but you do need to go ahead and be able to click on some line service to tell you what is the line at DraftKings, what is the line at other books, all displayed in multiple columns in front of you. Wait a minute. I'm curious about this Don Best thing now. You pay 500 bucks a month? Yeah, and you know, it's actually I get a discount. I get 450 a month. They give me a 10% discount. And the second the line moves anywhere in about 30 different books, I'm a, aware of it. And so it pays for itself each and every month with as, as much betting as I do. Okay. So you're Steve, are you just constantly looking at that screen all day? All day long. Absolutely. So, oh my gosh. And, 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 you know, there's leading indicator books, the really sharp books. I'll use an example in Vegas. I'm going to pull back the curtain here. Everyone's going to get mad at me. I don't care. All right. A lot of Vegas books, they talk about how sharp they are and how they've got these hall of fame bookmakers and they welcome all comers. And it's simply not true. All right. Uh, the South Point is an example. The South Point's a perfectly fine book, but they do limit some betters. They do kick out some betters. They kick out winners, and they don't take fifty thousand, a hundred thousand dollar bets unless you're Charles Barkley and you're a proven loser. All right. The only book that takes big bets and lets everyone play is Circa. Circa is the number one book, and it's not even close in Las Vegas. And so prominently displayed on my odd service is Circa because they take the biggest limits and they take it from everyone. So oftentimes if you want to make a $3,000 bet, for instance, on something and everyone else had a $1,000 limit, you'd probably bet it at Circa sooner rather than later to get more volume in. So I'm always paying attention to what the Circa lines are doing. NFL season wins, for example, they have the biggest limits right now on the NFL season wins. So I'm always checking daily what's going on with the Circa number. Cleveland Browns, for example, the Browns uh, season win total dropped from 10 to 9. It dropped at Circa first before anyone else. What are their limits? Five thousand. I'm sorry, ten thousand dollars on a season win number. They're, they and they have alternative totals where they they add one to the total and they subtract one. And those alternative totals, they take three thousand dollars. You ever see any value in the alternative totals? It is rare, but there are times where a team I think is extremely volatile on how they would do. The Browns, as an example, you know what? If you're going to play the Browns under, I think you can go ahead and take two to one and take one game less on that under and play a Browns under eight Browns could really, you know, they could go, they could win 11 games. They could win six games. Don't you think Ross, there's a whole lot of different outcomes on a team like the Browns. Yes. There's no question. There's a lot right now when it comes to the Browns. Um, that's interesting. So whatever Circa loses by letting Pros like you bet there or having higher limits, they feel like they get back by you guys saying that they're the best. 
Yeah, absolutely. And Jeff Benson laid that all out. He's like, you know what? We're holding 3.7% and other books are holding 7%. They're holding twice as much as us, but we're still making a whole lot of money. You know why? Because we're betting 10 times, we're, we're accepting 10 times the volume of wagers than what some of our competitors are doing. And frankly, they profile different players. And when I bet certain things, they're going to move aggressively. They're going to move two points sometimes on a opener on a total as soon as my bet comes in because they know I'm a proven winner against them and they're going to use my information to sharpen up their numbers. Which is a good way to do it, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it's surprising that every book doesn't do that. The reason every book doesn't do that, Ross, is a lot of the other books are just super, super lazy. They don't even watch the screen. And so what happens is you'll have a situation, let's say an NBA total drops from 210 down to 208 suddenly. All right. And of course, the the square ball book isn't paying any attention anyways. So they're still dealing 210. And then I come in and I say, oh, Max, bet under 210. Well, I'm not giving them any information there because I'm not originating. I'm just following the screen move, if you will. So they would argue, well, why am I letting you know Steve play against me? He's just picking my pocket, taking off all these soft numbers. And my reply would be, well, why, why don't you like do your job and pay attention that the market's moving and move in step with it rather than just sit there, you know, and and take your hour and a half lunches and not do what, what you're being paid by your employer to do. So there's the conflict there. Okay, so they got to figure out a free line service to use so that they can track the line movements. Absolutely. And, and be aware, just with NFL week one, where the numbers are moving, you know, and and you almost feel like you're dialed in. It's like the stock market. Ross, you you, you go ahead and check in on your stock. Do you check check weekly the stocks you own, by example, and, what, and yeah. where, how they're moving? I think that's about right. Yeah, so it's it's very similar. Like you start doing this with the NFL Week One lines and say, "Huh, that's interesting." Uh, Carolina, Cleveland. I know that Carolina was catching four and a half. Now that one's down to three. It's off the board in some spaces. It's like checking in on the stock market and where all the numbers are moving. That that's pretty cool. I mean, that makes perfect sense. But a lot of people don't do that. Yeah, and I would say. You know, we're going to be betting on these NFL games in September and nothing gives you a better feel for what's been happening with the numbers than to have been following it all summer long. And then you can get a good feel for, you know, wait a minute, um, you know, the Green Bay and the Vikings, you know, the, I know that this line was Green Bay minus one and a half at the Vikings forever. Um, and it gives you a feel for it, like say there's a, a few injuries and the like. And you're thinking about betting Green Bay minus three in September for whatever reason. And you can say, you know, I'm really getting the worst of it. Um, I could have had Green Bay at a much cheaper price all summer long. So you could be aware of relatively, you know, how much value are you getting on your wagers that you're making, you know, right before the game start. Speaking of value, I know a lot of people are thinking about maybe getting a new suit for a wedding or like I – just recently had a speaking engagement. If you're going to be at a summer wedding, you need to take a look at the suits from Express. Beat the heat in lightweight linen, breathable. That's the key. Breathable cotton fabrics. You can mix and match for endless outfits or go for a full monochrome look. That's me. I'm more of a monochrome guy. Anyway, Everything you need is at Express, online or in the store. Find something for every destination, including like a summer wedding, at Express, online or in store. All right, Steve. Some of your other tips relate to NFL and college football win totals and team schedules, but we're going to save those for a future episode because we've got so many people that want to ask you a question always it's time for ask steve ever wanted to ask a professional sports better a question it's time to ask steve 
Steve, this one comes to us from Bob, who went to the top of the line because he got a story from myfrontpagestory.com. Maybe it was for Father's Day. I don't know. Maybe it was for Mother's Day. Maybe it was just an anniversary or birthday, but well done, Bob. He actually sent me uh, not only the receipt from myfrontpagestory.com, but a copy of the story they did, which is awesome. Really impressed. Very unique gift idea. I would have never thought of. Thank you, Bob. My question for Steve is an NFL offseason question. At the end of the 2021 season, in likelihood, if you pinned him down about his power rate. Oh, I think we asked this one, didn't we? We He, he wanted to know. Um, he I think we asked this one, right? Where he talked about the regression. Like, why was there not the same? All right, Bob, sorry. Bob, we already asked that one, right, Steve? We did, yes. Basically, the answer was, all things being equal, we assume a really good or a really bad team regresses by about two wins. So um, if a team wins three games, we expect them to go up to five. If a team wins 13, we expect them to drop to 11. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago because you mentioned football outsiders looks at too much regression. I remember that. Okay, so let's go to Marco Andrews, all right? He has a two-part question. Hypothetical. You find a line on a game that is the best line you have ever seen. No way you can lose this short of a plane crash. How many units do you wager? What is your highest limit? Uh, ten, Ten zillion. Uh, example, uh, years ago, the Hard Rock and LSU, Louisiana Monroe game, LSU was laying 35. They wrote it LSU plus 35. They got the sign wrong. So LSU plus 35 was not going to lose. A buddy of mine went in there and he won. He just started playing $90 parlays with LSU plus 35 and every single game on the college board he bet for like half an hour he got to like where he had over 10 grand on the game more than like what his bankroll was finally they cut him off he like was calling people borrowing the money and the like um because he knew it would win so the answer is you bet your entire bankroll on something that's certain to win and that's an example your entire bankroll if it's a hundred percent to win, what, what's the what's the odds LSU plus thirty five against Louisiana and Monroe was going to win? Ninety nine point nine 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 nine. There you go. Then there's a story in the old TV show, The Odds Couple. They thought they had a sure thing at the track, and they have a suitcase full of money. They've been winning like crazy. Felix and Oscar, and Oscar says maybe we should hold something back. To which Felix reaches in the suitcase takes out a $5 bill, and he says, all right, we'll save $5 for socks. <laughs> um, the other question from Marco, what is your process that causes you to move a one-unit bet versus lean? Curious about the risk side of sports betting. I will say this, Steve. You don't do a lot of one-unit bets. Your your standard is two-unit. If it's a one-unit for you, you usually don't play it. Yeah, because the in the greater scheme of things, it doesn't really amount to much of a change in what my year-to-date results will be. So I would say a strong lean is kind of like a one-star play, which means one percent of bankroll. A lean is like I'll bet half a percent of my own bankroll, but for tracking purposes. It's just such a pain in the neck to like do all the accounting and everything that almost all my plays are either two or three stars, 2% of bankroll recommended or 3% of bankroll. So um, that's interesting that you say that. How do you track all your stuff? Uh, pre- pre-game does it for me. So when I give out my, my premium selections to my clients, the, there's a system that automatically tracks it. And I'm independently monitored by a fellow um, computer, Bob, who um, is a um, and 100% no affiliation with me or anyone else that just tracks sharp betters and various outcomes, a really, really sharp guy in the industry. So I, hold on a second, though. 
You bet at all kinds of different books. How do you track that? My betting is completely independent of my tracking as a handicapper. So I, I, I track my own betting where I just have Excel spreadsheets and I bet maybe 20, 20, 10 times as many bets as what I give out to my clients because I've got access to all kinds of rogue numbers, games of the year that my clients could never get anyways. But so I track my own bets on Excel spreadsheets, but I have... Um, systems in play to track my official plays I give out to my clients. Isn't it? Oh, you can't just track it on apps because you do it in person. The apps. Yeah. Well, well, well no, I, I make some bets actually at the buildings and I also bet on the apps and the apps do track it where I can go back in. Um, if I look at a betting app and it'll show me, you know, a summary of all the wagers that I've made. So I certainly can do it that way, but I just enter them into an Excel spreadsheet. Love it. Um, that seems like a lot of you for you to organize, though, Steve. You do you bet a lot. Like, how much time is it just to organize, to, like put all your bets? And I mean, don't you bet like at least ten bets a day? Oh, at least. So usually, what happens is like midweek, I'll go back and I'll take a look at all the bets I made Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And some and whack them all in, you know, on when I when I've got a little bit of extra time. Um, yeah, this is documented well. Alan Boston is a professional better, and in the book The Odds, it talks about his betting he's doing and how you can get so busy that you just forget about stuff. And he lost a ton of money on Ohio State, and he's like looking through his ledger and he turns the page and he sees this ticket he had forgotten about. It's another three thousand dollar bet on Ohio State that he lost, and he's like, huh, huh, forgot about that. What a good customer I am. Another $3,300 lost on that game. Wow. Uh, I love this. I love when people get to ask you questions. Please keep them coming. Please either give us a five-star review and send it to me, ross at rostucker.com, or take advantage of any of our sponsors that you heard, like Athletic Greens or Express Clothing. Send it to me, ross at rostucker.com, because we're going to have an opportunity coming up next couple weeks for you guys to ask even more questions which is absolutely awesome other than that check out steve on social media at fezic sport that's the only place you can find him i'm at ross tucker nfl we are at ross tucker pod and of course you can watch us on youtube youtube.com slash ross tucker nfl good luck everybody hope you guys win some money Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.